They study it. If you're not studying this Moorish Quran and understanding the teachings in this Quran that'll make a man upright, to teach you about dedication, to teach you about covenant, to teach you about everything, you ain't rocking with nothing. You just talking. So back to what I was saying. How did our prophet once travel? Through the Masonic order until he became a noble. Then he entered Islam the same way I did. But see y'all getting it caught up. Ain't nobody said nothing about no Freemasonry. He said the Masonic order. I told you it's, it's two thought processes in this world. Theology and Masonry. You know? And they missing it. And they missing it. Because you're giving your credit. You're giving the science to somebody outside of yourself. <laughs> and that's the problem. Who represent Islam in the West? Since 1912, Noble Ali. Did our holy prophet, Nabi Jirali, enter the shrine? Yes, he did enter Islam this way. Does this mean uh, uh, that Moorish Americans should seek to become masons and shriners? No, absolutely not. Listen to this, and I'm going to clear this up. That's why I be saying, man, stop letting people lie to you. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. Because if you some Freemasonry, that means you got some potentate. That means you got some, what, some grandmaster over you, and y'all know I'm telling the truth. And that's just, that's all type of religion. You got some, the same that you got no disrespect. You got somebody that don't look like you. You call him your grandmaster, your potentate. Man, go on with me. Go on with that crap, man. Why? Why? Because there is no longer any need for this because our prophet, Noble Drew Ali, and myself, that as an adult, I give you the 32 and 33 degrees in your divine instruction number two. That's why I say, man, this ain't just nothing. This, you must live this stuff. That's why I'm honorable when I go. I have my feds on everywhere I go on my turban. I'm honorable. I'm noble. People know who I am. They study your black ass to a T. That's why they were in memory of you. But you get this, all these instructions. When, 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 the, when, the, when the tarba and the mithra, which is the turban, was placed on your captor, which is your crown, and you got the science. Who amongst the highest of Rome enter out Islam by practice? Masons, by practice. It's not a birthright. It's, it's, it's clandestine, religious and political. At what degree? Only 32. What's the secret password? Asalaamu Alaikum. What happens? A mason is bound to his knees and proclaiming that Allah is God, becoming a practicing Muslim. If you don't know about what, what, what the, uh, uh, why our shriners considered the joke of masonry, because they left Christianity to practice a religion other than that of their forefathers' religion while living in a Christian country. That's why. Re read the manuals. What exactly is the Al-Islam religion that the masons proclaim and practice? The names, the issues, and the principles of Arabia mixed with a select version of the faith of the Korshai, the Moor Muhammad. See, these is facts that you can prove. Is the Arabian Al-Islam our religion? Absolutely not. I told y'all, this ain't no Al-Islam. This is American Islam. And if you confuse what American Islam is, well, you better say it. Because this damn sure ain't no Al-Islam. Our religion is Islamism. Islamism, connecting God and man is one. Just like monotheism, connecting this one God. Just like Zoroastrianism. What is Islamism? The religion of our forefathers. Can I explain the difference, how it differs from Al-Islam? Absolutely I can. Eloquently I can. With a silver tongue. With sureness. Islamism is the universal law in harmony with self. Resulting in peace. The science and study of self-mastery. That Allah and man are one. Al-Islam being the Arabic for peace. Which was perfected by Muhammad in the course in Arabic. And has since unlike Islamism. The Prophet Nobel Drew Ali brought Moorish Americans, been viewed by the world much like calichism in the premise to serve a God which exists outside of man himself. What's another form of Al Islam? You know, y'all know it's outside of yourself. What we practice is to it's secure, which is to know ourselves. Can a Moorish, can a Moorish American be a Mason also? Listen to me. Can a Moorish American be a Mason also? Absolutely not. If you did that before, you did, you knew who you were, then you got to let that shit go. You got to let it go because I'm going to call it out because I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it in your eyes. I'm going to see it in your face. And I'm going to call you out on it. I'm going to call you out on the lies. And see, a person when a person don't know something, they'll be like, oh, come on, y'all know what this is with me, man. Y'all know what this is with me. Ain't nobody over me. I don't have no potentate. I am the temple. My father's in heaven and my father's in the room. That's my sheik. Ain't no goofball nigga or no sheik. How, how, how some goofy nigga gonna be my sheik? 
You got to be crazy. I don't, res I don't respect nobody that's a fool. I'll walk right past your dumb ass. Talk about let's take some pictures. I ain't gonna call them more out. Or more, can we take some pictures and act like we? Hell no. Hell. 32 and 33 degrees is dead science. That's in, in meteorology. In, in meteorology, that's when water freaking freezes. That's snowman wisdom. That's why they tassel pin down. That's why they got Arabian ally and all the degrees in it. And and the uh the crescent and the moon and the uh scimitar are uh, 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 those are all prophetic, but then it's certain things that they that they have to the oath they take the oath and not to tell you the truth they science is pinned down it's only 32 and 33 degrees and then and then a more of uh, 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 I ain't gonna call it no more a, a Freemason that dis, that try to wear the feds like a more nor they're a Freemason they wear it in clandestine and then you go to your Masonic groups man you a flyer in a sin Can a Moorish American be a Mason also? No, not a true and faithful Moorish American. Can you expound further on the science of the Shriner being labeled as a joke of masonry? Absolutely. This all no Moors don't know nothing. It takes you to the history of the Moorish and the Moorish dance. A dance borrowed from the Moors, or more accurately, an imitation of their dance. Just like when you look in the Netherlands and you see Black Pete or Swarty Pyatt, and you see Santa Claus, you see the European dressed up like goddamn, like the Pope, Santa Claus. And I'll tell you what that all that goofy stuff is about. And they dress up in blackface and Morris attire. And they try to say black Pete. The reason why they dress up in blackface because he went down the chimney and got dirty. But y'all know that's garbage. Just like Santernalia, the, the other fake Christmas, when the European, no disrespect, they dress up, the men dress up like the women, the women dress up like the men. All perverted stuff, no disrespect. But this ain't no secret with me. I'm a scholar, man. And I ain't no fake scholar. Many people, many groups of people throughout Europe extended to the so-called Middle East, India, and parts of Central and South Africa. I can go on and on, but we got to proceed. What form of Islam do Moorish Americans adhere to? Sufi. What is the Sufi teachings? Sufi teaching is Islamism, that man and Allah are one. How is this proven? By our Holy Quran. What surah? What verse? Surah 2, verse 31 and 34. I hope y'all writing this down. Surah verse, surah 2, verse 31 and 34. Who built the holy city of Mecca? Mobites. Where is the true city of Mecca? On the land of the ancient Moors, Mobite, and Canaanites. On what landmass is the holy city of Mecca? Um, uh, uh, North America, 42nd parallel. Mecca is where our prophet is. How do I know this to be true? Look, man, I just gave it to you. Where's the, where's the holy city of Mecca? I just gave that to you. Reading your Moorish Quran. What evidence do I have? You got to consider who and by what names throughout the Moorish astrological account who the ancient Canaanites were. And I tell y'all, names have duality, especially if the pen was changed. You got to connect the language. What are some of the names? Phonicium. P-O-E-N-I-C-I-U-M. What does Phoenician mean? It means Carnagenian. It means Phoenician. What period was this? Between 800 and 146 BC. Where? The ancient Moorish kingdom of Carthage. What is the modern name of the kingdom? Tunis. And y'all talk about, y'all give credit, talk about some Africa was named after Africa, Africa, uh, 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 Africa was named after European. And I destroyed that. I told y'all that's a lie. That's propaganda. How they got that bull crap, what it's called, hidden colors, and them goofballs on there talking about some Africa was named after a European. And when I dog checked them, them Negroes for spreading Afrocentric propaganda, the goofball going to send me a long email talking about, no, but I'm going to apologize. I'm sending out apology letters. But you call yourself some scholar, and that's Afrocentric propaganda because Africa was not named after no damn European. I done did this on college campuses over and over, and more still promulgate that garbage. Africa was not named after no damn European. And if I keep seeing more saying that goofy shit propaganda, I'm deleting you too. Because that ain't scholarship. That's Afrocentric bullshit. We must consider who and by what names throughout the Moors astrological account, man. You got to know this. What documentary evidence can you offer to show the Carnegieian? Canaanite, America, Mecca, the connection. How? By D. What deed? The deed of the ancient Canaanite, the Carnegieian, the Sufite, Hano Bey, third generation of Empress Elysia Bey, daughter of King Mouton I, and great grandfather of Godalin, Murasani, General, Hannibal, Hannibal, or Hannibal, 
is the ancient document by express. The proclamation inscribed on the born stone. Look up the born stone found at the Kamashkumakat, Cape Cod Bay, K-O-M-A-S-S-A-K-U-M-K-A-N-I-T. I might be pronunciating it wrong, but I spelled it for you. You pronounce it. Cape Cod Bay, New England, Massachusetts, document in the Born Historical Society. Research it. It's in the Born Historical Society. I'm going to give you peer-reviewed scholarly research. I ain't going to blow smoke up your ass. Mm -hmm. What does the deed proclamation describe in terms of meets and bounds? Meets and bounds. The possession and annexation of the Americas to the Iberian Peninsula, Carthage, Tunis, Marrakesh, Numidia, Utica, being of the same possessions of Northeast, Southwest Africa, including North, Central, and South America, Mexico, and the Atlantis Islands. I can go on and on, but the rest is for my students. I told you I got ancient stuff that's gonna blow your mind when I when a more asks me, what is the book of Belmont? B-A-L-L-Y-M-O-T-E or Belmont. When you become a student, you're going to get it. Research what I'm saying. Or the ancient Ogham writings, the ancient O-G-A-M writings. Moors don't know what the hell I'm talking about. This is stuff that these fake Moors talk about. They some adepts. And when I talk, they say, oh, Moor, you way over their heads. I say, but you got a title talk about you some damn adept. You say you some adept, but you some scholar. So if you a scholar, it's a thing called peer review scholarly research. And scholars synchronize. You ain't no scholar. You a nigga with a fair zone. That's what you are. And I'm calling it out. I don't care. It's a celebrated book that was assembled about 800 years ago for a collection of miscellaneous manuscripts. And the manuscripts include the codex called the Quam, the Q-U-A-M tract that deals with 70 uh, uh, varieties of ancient Moorish, Mobite, and Canadite, the Iberian scripts. <laughs> I, can go, I can get deeper with this science, man. It's way deeper. What did our holy prophet, Nobu Drew Ali, bring us? He brought us love. I tell y'all, love is an action word. What is love? What is love? That which creates, that which destroys, and that which saves. What is, what is our prophet to us? An angel. What am I to y'all? I should be an angel. An angel of Allah in the flesh. How can a man say they love God and they ain't never seen it, but then you say you hate man and you see every day and the scriptures, everything attests that God works through man. Or you don't think the great God of Allah is working through my veins? You got to be crazy. You got to be a fool if you don't think that the great God of Allah is working in my vein and is working in your veins. Come on, man. What is our prophet to us? An angel. What kind of angel? What kind? The cherubim. Look at what the cherubim is. Who was Moses? Moses was the real son of Pharaoh. Y'all don't even know this. What was his nationality? Moorish Egyptian. When I tell you, a lot of Moors don't want to talk about the 18th dynasty of the Moorish Israelite. See, I'm going to connect it all. They got you twisted. Research the story of Ancinet and Joseph. You Moors is all in your lower self, and that's the problem. What was his crime? Adopting the faith of the Hebrews. What did Moses do? He rejected the idea of gods of Egypt. What event took place? Moses became an outcast amongst his father's house, killed an Egyptian, fled in the land of Mo. I I'm telling you, what else took place? Moses met a sheik who practiced the faith of Abraham, Lot, Moab, and Ishmael. What did Moses discover? He discovered himself. Look, in the book of Acts, man, I'll break everything down for y'all, man. When a uh, uh, Job was destroyed, and y'all thinking it was some mental. But see, what it was, Job was doubting. He was in his lower self. And once he be, and, and once he figured out who he was, everything was brought back to him. I hope y'all figuring what I'm what I'm trying to say, the analogy and the parable, but you think it's always something uh, uh, physical. And you got to understand the parable and, and the symbology and the analogy. Who was Aaron to Moses, his prophet? What is the Moorish American Society of Comprehension, uh, uh, Comprehension Science? Answer, principally, it is a foreign ministry, national uh, legation, and Balik of a talismanic Moorish kingdom. I'm stopping right there with that. You see that? You see that? Now watch. This should stop you from dissing any holy book. This should stop you from dissing the Bible right here. And I'm about to give it to you. This should stop you from going around acting like some damn domestic terrorist and a religious mad-ass dog. Watch this. In regards to the incident, when we're talking about how, when I say how, and I'm just using the context, how black people, we know we Moors. Look, man, don't y'all know where Berber is? See, I'm going to show you, look, 
In ancient writings, they always talk about the Berber pirates and it went over their head. Who the hell you think the Berber pirates was? Black Berber just meant your ass blacker than all our days. They talking about you. But, it, but you totally lost because you're not synchronizing things. So it's been quoted that Ham, the father of the so-called black man, was cursed by his father, Noah. But in regards to this incident, we, I got to go to the Bible. I hope you got your Bibles because that's like our prophet said, I told you, I'm going to use this Bible to prove exactly who you are and no one can deny it. No one can deny it. Today should be your last day following goofballs. It's not. It's going to be your last day following me. Now, in regard to this incident, let us take the Bible record for it. And anyone not totally blind with predators will be convinced by reading in the book of Genesis, the ninth chapter from the 20th to the 27th verse, inclusive that Noah did not. For he could not curse Ham, although he did in a fit of intoxication when, you, when Negroes get drunk. Oh, forget you, nigga. Oh, hey. On that dumb stuff. Well, I don't agree with the law. It's only one law. You don't agree with law because you're a liar and a scam artist. So you be drunk, per se, with your foolishness and pronounce a curse on Cannon, the son of Ham. But remember, you got to understand that Cannon was never inconvenienced by the curse of Noah because he was the father of seven prosperous nations, according to the scriptures, right? And among them were the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, and the Sidians. Didn't I just show y'all in the other science how the Phoenicium was the Phoenicians? I just showed y'all that. How it was the Carnegieans? Didn't I just show you that? Didn't I just show you? I connected that. I, I, I know this be a lot of over Moore's heads, but if you were a student, you'd be like, well, he just connected it because the Phoenician is the Phoenician. That's the Carnegian. I just, I just broke that science down. How I can trace it. It all synchronized. And then I get, and then I get a damn, the, uh, uh, the Al Islam Quran and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Start connecting it because the language is just changed. Different language, but it means the same shit. Prove me wrong. You can't. Because they lying to y'all. The Sidion sprang from Sidon who was the first son of Canaan, according to Genesis, the 10th chapter, the 15th verse. And these same Sidions are the men described from black men whom Solomon ordered Haram of Tyre. Right? I just, I just broke that down to y'all when I was giving them Masonic keys. I'm synchronizing this. You got to get out that hate and get into this wisdom that's in these holy books. Solomon ordered Haram of Tyre to engage, to do the skill ewing and design of the temple work of Solomon's temple. Right? Solomon declared that these Sidions, black men, were the only men possessed with uh, uh, anywhere near sufficient skill to take charge or successfully complete the artistic temple work on his Solomon's temple. Research in 1 Kings, the 5th and the 6th verse. It speaks very plainly of this fact. Solomon knew that the black, y'all know I'm talking about Moors, but I'm, I want to stay in the context. That the black race, the Moors race, was a superior, not an inferior race. Didn't he marry Pharaoh's daughter in 1 Kings, the third chapter, the first verse, the seventh chapter, the eighth verse, also the ninth chapter and the 16th verse? You see how I'm going to give you scholarship? I ain't just going to say, and the Bible says this, like them goofy Negro preachers, and the Bible says this. Well, show me. They can't show you. Well, I'm going to show you. Solomon's wife might have been of a darker skin or even as black as he was, for history shows that Egypt had two full bloody Ethiopian pharaohs just before and during the reign of Solomon, according to Herodotus, who, their pen, and the names of these two Ethiopians were Sabaco, S-A-B-A-C-O, or Sebikos, S-E-B-I-C-H-O-S, and Sidos, S-E-T-H-O-S. Didn't I show y'all more than the hieroglyphics, the Y-H-W-H? Didn't I show y'all how I can connect that based off the based off their alphabet? I showed y'all what the Y-H-W-H was. I showed y'all all this stuff. See, what a, what a fake ass more not going to tell y'all. Listen, man, let me tell y'all something. When I tell y'all about my upbringing of metaphysics, uh, Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, when I show y'all my charts, when you become a student, when I show y'all Elohim made in the image or man made in the image of Elohim, when I talk about the most holy place and the holy place and the quarter on about, when I talk about the pillars and the pillars symbolize everything that's symbolized in the body, the true teachers of more science is connecting God and man as one. 
The other shit is international, local, and state law. And see, and that's the thing. They a lot of these goofball more trouble always deal with civics. Nigga, you gotta deal with law to deal with civics. More science is connecting who you are. And then I take to the and then I take it to the legal aspect that you're not Negro, black, and color. That's what they're not gonna tell y'all. And I tell y'all, we're under the Hebrew codes. Our diet is the Hebrew code. And our Moors Quran. See, I know Moors ain't read nothing. Let me go to chapter in, in your Moors Quran, because I always have to. When I do things, it'd be so in my head, and I like to show and improve every time. It's chapter 11, verse 43. Listen clearly. Chapter 11, verse 43 in your Moorish Quran. Listen to this and tell me what you get out of this. Verse 43. The Hebrew prophet is the rising star of wisdom, defy. He brings to us a knowledge of the secret things of Allah. All the world will hear his words. Who words? Who words? Who words do we hear? This Hebrew prophet and glorify his name. You priest of the temple, Kabbalistu. Stay, be still, and listen. When he speaks, he is the living oracle of Allah. So what these goofballs talking about? What this Moorish Quran talk about? All I see in this Moorish Quran, know thyself, the creation and fall of man, Elihu's lessons, the unity of life, uh, uh, death and burial of Elizabeth, Matthias' lessons, the ministry of death. Let's get, now watch, let's get the deep. After the feast, the homeward journey, the missing Jesus, the search for him. His parents find him in the temple. He goes with them to Nazarene, the symbolic meaning of the carpenter tools. Life and works of Jesus in India among the Muslims. The friendship of Jesus and Lamas. Jesus explains to Lamas the meaning of the truth. Jesus reveals to the people of the sinful ways. Jesus attends a feast in Bihar. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? Jesus spake on the unity of Allah and man and one to the Hindus. Jesus and Bartha. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm, I'm just telling y'all something because uh, you, you goof more and more and going around talking about the, this white man stuff. Show me, show me in the Bible where it says that the great God or your Messiah is some white man. Show me. That's only niggas doing that stupid shit. It ain't nowhere in your, in your biblical scriptures talking about some your Messiah is some white man. So miss me with that garbage. Miss me with all that garbage you Negroes going around with. Ain't nobody, only person that showed you that is your tradition. Your mama told you that shit, but I ain't told you. My mama ain't teach me that growing up. My parents ain't teach me that crap because it ain't nowhere in the book. The only way you think that because you're looking at a pictorial. You go to the big mama house, you got a big ass picture or Caesar Borga or Serapis Christo on the wall talking about that's Jesus. That's why. But ain't, ain't the teachers ain't teach you that. So don't blame the, the teachings. Blame your upbringing. Blame your Negro pastor like Carter G. Woodson was saying. Don't get on me. Blame your Negro pastor. Blame your, your dad or your mom that so-called got this education in African-American studies. You blame them. But you don't blame the teachings because I'll prove you a liar. Hell, don't blame that on the teachers. The teachers is right. It must be explained from the right perspective, the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus appears fully materialized. The holy instruction warning for all young men, marriage instructions. Come on, man, y'all better stop playing with me. The instruction for the child, the obedience of the children towards the father, the obedience of the children towards the father, a holy covenant of the Asiatic nation, holy instructions of unity, the holy unity of the rich and the poor. When I talk about the land, the lion and the lamb, waking up in peace, the, the uh, analogies. Man, please, please. And this naturally increased the proportion of Negro blood in the veins of the future king of the Jews. That's why I say the grand old Bible does not show that God ever turned a man black to disgrace him for his sins or anything else. But this same Bible does show that God, God's power or Allah's power or every name you want to magnify it did turn no disrespect a man white to disgrace him because of his sins and said that his seed would be likewise forever. Right. That's why I say facts is stubborn. That's why I say, yeah, facts is stubborn, but it's the truth. If you carefully read the fifth chapter of the second Kings and the 25th, the 26th and the 27th verse, many of our highly civilized brethren whose ancient ancestors is disgraced. You know, research this science. I'm telling you, research this science and you're going to let and you're going to let your people tell you that garbage. Morris think a trick. It means something. That's why I said, man, I am so done. I'm I'm deleting so many people today because Morris think buying a trick. is going to save you. 
And it's the knowledge. And all more want to do is just buy shit and buy shit. And then you ask me a whole bunch of dumbass questions. Well, today it's over. If you're not willing to be a student, you will be deleted off my page. I don't give a shit about buying no fucking jewelry. I don't give a damn about buying nothing. Because that don't save people. You can have all the jury and all that shit in the world and next year still be a, a Negro in the, pro, in, in the real world and afraid to wear your face and don't know the degrees. All that stuff don't mean nothing. That's why the babies lost. That's why the women lost. That's why these goofball moors is lost because nobody's not willing to be educated the proper way. We think we buy a, a, a trinket like that made you smart. I put a damn suit on a monkey. It's still a damn monkey. Right, Empress? I can put all this on the monkey. I can put all this stuff on the monkey. It's still going to be a dumbass monkey. And you talk about some evolve. How the hell can you evolve? A monkey's still a fucking monkey. And you think you're going to buy all this and dress all up like that means something. That don't mean nothing. You, ain't, you don't know nothing. You just a dressed up monkey. Y'all ain't following me, man. That's why I said we've been conditioned not to be educated. We've been conditioned to follow people. We've been conditioned to think less of ourselves. We've been conditioned to not look at your, somebody that looks like you and see the great God and see the education and see the scholarship. That's our problem. And all more is doing is selling shit to people. That's all they doing. That's all they doing. When I talk about the science, I talk about the literature and the wisdom. They don't know nothing. They don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And y'all are dust. So all we doing is just buying shit. If that's what this is about, somebody talk. All, we, all this is about this buying shit. But you ain't going to teach your kids nothing. And watch when black history come. All your kids going to be talking that black slave shit. And I'll get all your kids and put them in a the room and be like, you see? Because I, 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 I done did it before. I'll get everybody more. That's a kid. Because I know you don't study with your kid. You damn sure don't study with your empress. And I'll get them. And i ask them, what are you, Negro, black, and colored? And I'll put certain images in front of them. And they'll pick everything that's outside themselves. I bet you. And i put money on it. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. But we think we're going to buy some shit like that means something. Man, go on. Don't give a damn about nobody looking like no dressed up monkey. Don't get mad at me. I'm just tired of this, man. All I see is more of this dressed up with a whole bunch of stuff. And then when they start speaking, I'm like, man, you sound like an idiot. And then I'm looking at your life. I'm looking at your empress, which you don't have one. I'm, I'm looking at the children. Man, come on, man. Unequally yoked is not bringing these teachers home. The grand old Bible does not show that a, a God ever turned a black man to disgrace him for his sins or anything else. But this same Bible does show that God turned a, a man white to disgrace him because of his sins and said that his seed will likewise forever. You know. I give you all text. I give you all things. I give you the text among the many low cowardly things that have been said and done against the Negro during this Christian era. They've been doing this scholarship. They've been doing this all over. And, and today, no reason should you be following this stupid, stupid stuff. Because your network is supposed to be your network. But this is what a Negro say. Oh, man, I study at home. Negro, you a shade tree mechanic. All you know how to do is change your fucking brakes. You don't know how to do nothing else. Oh, I study at home. What you studying? You damn sure ain't studied this Morris Quran because the last more I talked to you, like noble, well, that Morris Quran is written in cold. I said, well, if it's written in cold, well, why you ain't following, uh, why you ain't studying under a cold breaker then? If it's written in cold and I know the cold, why you ain't following under a cold breaker? Oh, because you think you know something. You're going to be like, well, I think it means this. And people going to ask you, what does it mean? Well, I think this. You just messed up. I'm going to squeeze your hand and walk away because I don't give a damn what you, what you think. But I don't give a damn what you think. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, prove all things and hold fast to what is good. If you can't prove what you're saying, man, let me go. And even the metaphysical dictionary, that's okay. Look, I mean, I, man, metaphysical dictionaries are cool. But then I talk about gematria. See, metaphysical is almost like the eso and the exo, where you're taking the things that people take literally and it's explaining everything inside. But then it's deeper science. When a person, I tell people, remove your lower self, remove the lower ego. When a person thinks they know something, I'm like, that's not it, because this, this is a higher wisdom. Everything that a person is going to think, I have a library. I got a metaphysical dictionary, but then you should have a metaphysical Bible as well. Then you should have gematria, because it's words that more is just, oh, I think it mean this, and it don't mean that. Well, I know for a fact, Morris get a metaphysical by uh, dictionary. And when I done talk, cause I, I had a metaphysical school, Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. I got all the charts and Morris just makes shit up. You got to understand the context because a dictionary in words, they can have different explanations. 
They can have this different explanation. That's why I tell them more. Have you read it all? Have you read the whole thing? What the word mean in the context and how the word can be used in different contexts? No. Nope. So I don't give a shit this because you got something and the person don't know how to use it. A fucking compass ain't no good if you don't know how to use it. A map ain't no good if you don't know how to use the map. But I got one. I got one. Okay, I'll put your ass in the middle of the jungle and say, get to north latitude, east longitude, where the water flows up the stream. Right there, you will find me right in the back meditating with my sage blowing, drinking some tea. You won't know where the hell to go. You will be lost. But you got but you got the but you got the book, but you don't know how to read it. You don't know how to get to know where you're going. You don't know how to comprehend it. That's what I'm telling Moors. But we got some shit. And I say, the problem is we always think we got some shit. Well, if you got it, put it out there and explain it. Can't do it. They can't do it. But I got some shit. Okay, well, explain it eloquently and explain both sides. Explain all the manifestations. Explain the esoteric meaning, the exoteric meaning. Explain it all. They can't. The average Negro and a fake sheep, they can't do it. Period. So don't get, and I, so don't get upset with me. When a person say they got something, I'm like, I don't give a shit what you got. You ain't studying it. How I know about the stuff you saying. More just collect shit like tennis shoes and put it in the closet. That's how I know you wasting money. Period. Period. Don't get mad at me. God honored the Asiatic man or the black man per se by allowing some of his Ethiopian blood to flow in the veins of his only son, Jesus Christ. And I, and I say today, if we just use the words that Jesus, which is Yahshua in America today, be classified as what? A Negro. And I make this assertion only on the authority of the Bible that all you Negro Moors be this and I be laughing. And that is not what Noah Jirali taught. I use, I, and I'm coming from the Bible according to which Jesus of Yahshua was born out of what? The tribe of Judah. If you are more, you understand we're from the tribe of Judah, lineage of David by blood. Prove me wrong. Judah had only five children and they were males. First Chronicles, the second chapter and the fourth verse. Three by his first wife and two by his second wife. First Chronicles, the second chapter, the third and the fourth verse. And both of his wives were descendants of what? Canaan, a black man who was the son of who? Ham, Genesis 10. Right? Verse and, and, and the sixth verse, the ch chapter, the sixth verse, Tamar, Judah's second wife, bore him two of these sons whose names were Pharaohs, P-H-A-R-E-S, and Zara, Z-A-R-A-H. you damn right. I know what they're doing. They watch the NFL complaining, complaining to their emperors. Oh, you ain't going to cook. You sorry, nigga. That's all Negroes do is complain. Go to work, complain. Come home, complain. It's 24 hours in a day. When I come home from work, I'm bubbling. I'm coming home talking to my family, thinking how we finna put this plan together without, I don't give a damn how many Moors be with me because I do real life. I do real business and commerce. I'm a businessman and I'm a Moor. That's it. I don't let who I am mess up my life, which these goofy ass domestic terrorists doing. I ain't even call them dirty Moors. These dumb ass domestic terrorists doing. Making these goofy ass plates and these goofy ass passports and this goofy ass ID and all these goofy ass more following it on my page. And I'm deleting every goofy ass more that follow it because I don't give a shit. It's my page and it's my world. I delete everybody. I don't give a shit about no likes and no following or about no fucking piece of chain. That shit don't mean nothing to me. It's the science and the degrees. And everybody that follow my page are grown people. They grown people and they still asking the same dumb shit. Well, you can't be dumb as an adult because the scripture says that the glory of a young man is the strength, but the wisdom of an older man is the graze on his head. You're supposed to have some wisdom, man. You know? See, these two names appear in a genealogy of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, the first chapter, the third verse. So it's no trouble to see that Judah, of whom Christ was to come, started out by presenting the world's children of Canaanite women who were Hamite descendants. If we're going to tell the story, because there's more explanation, I'm giving you the esoteric. I mean, the exo. That's what I'm giving you. Now, Virgin Mary, per se, of whom Christ was born, was beyond all doubt a woman out of the tribe of Judah. Right? Come on. And every Bible refers or, or every Bible reference proclaims that Jesus was to spring from the tribe of Judah. Read Genesis 49, the 10th verse. Read Hebrew 7 and 14. Read Revelation the, uh, 5, uh, 5 and 5. 
Even in, in, in Paul tells you in, in Romans 1 and 3 that Jesus, which is Yahshua, because the never of the J in the Hebrew dialect, was of the seed of what? David, according to the flesh. And I just told you, if you are more and you nationalized through the temple, if you know who you are, we're from the tribe of Judah, lineage of David by blood. But you don't know. You're letting some goofball Negro diss stuff. And I'm telling you, you are in these holy books. And they used them to lie to you. That's what I'm telling you. David is the 10th man named from Judah in the genealogy of Christ. Matthew, the first chapter, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth verse. David's great, great grandfather, Booz, was born of the woman Rahab, who was a direct descendant of Ham. Matthew, the first chapter, the fifth verse. And this also shows that David, one of God's greatest soldiers, was one who uh, uh, most successfully led his people and one who had Negro blood in his veins. And the Bible history is full of honors for the Asiatic man, Jethro, the Ethiopian or Negro father-in-law of Moses, who was the author of, of who first employed that, which is today our judicial system. But we know where that come from. What? My eye. I keep telling y'all, stop dissing stuff and start synchronizing. Considerably twisted and revised to meet the changing conditions of civilization. Exodus, the 18th chapter. All that, the judicial system is my eye. How things is judged. You ain't got to listen to me. You need to be a student. And that chapter tells of Jethro's visit to Moses and how he gave Moses the foundation of what is today our so-called great courts from pronouncing judgments. Again, the Hebrew emancipator was named by a black woman, Pharaoh's daughter, and she said she called him Moses because she drew him out of the water. Exodus 2 and 10. Even besides Moses, Moses was educated by so-called blacks, received his education uh, uh, from the schools of the Moorish people or the black people. Read Acts 7, read uh, Acts the seventh chapter in verse 22 is nothing remarkable. All, I can go deep and deep with the science. I don't got to go off far. I can get, stay in modern history and ancient history. So I'm done, man. I'm going to leave y'all with this intro because I got 20 minutes. I'm going to leave y'all with this intro. And I tell y'all, you need to be a student. You think a trick is going to save you all you want to. You think a piece of jewelry is going to save you all you want to. You think this fair is going to save you all you want to, and you can't defend it. That's why Moors are afraid to wear their fairs in the public. That's why Moors won't wear their turban, because you will be asked. And then a, a lower-level European masonry that stood you to a T, he's going to ask you, and he's going to see if you can stand on your square, not with your feet out. He, your squares, understanding your degrees, it defended the fairs, what the preparation is all about, what the holes about, what the tassel symbolism, what the neighbor court is about, what the symbology, what's the history, what's the true meaning of Haram or beef. He's going to ask you that because he study you, you to a T. And then once you defend your degrees, he's going to bow down to, and he's going to, and he's a son of Malam, he's going to walk off in peace. If not, he's going to look at you like a damn dummy, the same way I do. Don't get mad at me, man. Don't get mad at me because what's happening today, look at this. No disrespect to nobody doing business. Everybody is selling stuff in the name of Noble Drew Ali. Man, go on with that shit with me, man. That's all more. That's all I see more doing is trying to sell more a tricket. But with the wisdom, the trick, he's going to be dumb as hell next year with a whole bunch of trickets. And nobody want to be like, man, we need to be, we need to be a part of the school. We can make this right. How? We can make this right. The people. The religious laws protect us. It's taxes in. We can make this. We can make this. But all Negroes are going to be doing is just buying a whole bunch of trickets. Next year, you're going to be on the internet, and they're going to be all dumb. They're going to be like, no, but where Noble Bay at? You won't be able to find me, but all y'all going to have is a whole bunch of jury on. And then when somebody asks you of your science and asks you who you are, you ain't going to know a damn thing. You're going to be looking at your jury. I'll snatch that bullshit off your neck. Hey, don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you because it don't mean nothing. All this stuff don't mean nothing. This feds don't mean nothing. If I can't defend it, that's why Moors won't wear their feds in public. They are wearing at home. Lights, camera, action. Because they can't defend their degrees. They won't wear their feds to work because you a domestic terrorist. And the religious laws protect you. The Jews wear their Hanukkah, the, the, the Al-Islams wear their Kufi, the uh, uh, Sheiks wear their turbans, but your scary eyes won't wear none of it. And it all comes from you because it's all your birthright. And I wear mine everywhere. Airports, on a plane, all over. But only more as I see, they wear it on the internet because they're afraid. So I'm going to give you a little introduction of the clock of destiny. I told y'all to be students. This is what you're going to get in school. This is what you're going to get in school. Clock of destiny one, clock of destiny two. Just I got everything. I got all the ancient manuscripts. Morris V. that post. Oh, I got that. Well, you ain't got shit. You ain't studying it. Come on. Oh, I got that. Man, my dad attests. I had this brother. I can't, I ain't going to say his name. My, my emperor's right here. Every time. Oh, I got that. I got that. I said, well, damn, nigga, you got everything. Why you don't know nothing? 
Oh, I got that. I got that science. I got that science. I got that. I got that PDF noble. Oh, I got that. Yep, I got that. Okay, you got it. Why you dumb as fuck? Excuse my language. Why you ain't honorable to your family? You all over the place. You chasing a dollar. You all over the place chasing a dollar. When I mean, you talk about you honorable, you ain't honorable upright. You a liar and a sin. Ain't no truth in you. But you got that. But you got that. Man gone. You just collecting shit. You a hoarder. Knowledge of truth is mankind's highest attainment. And you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And all evidence points toward the fact that had the truth been taught there would have been no need for the great statement to be recorded in literature and especially in the Bible. Things have to be said because they saw what was happening. That's why they said the truth will make you free. Why would somebody give a statement if, if they didn't know that people lying to them? I keep telling y'all this. That's why I'm aware of the fact that the category of astrology and global uh, ge uh, geography and the history of the Moorish nation will conflict with the nine out of every 10 persons of the United States of America, especially those often referred to as Negroes, ranging between the ages of 20 to shit, 70, 80, owning the Christian education. And therefore, I concede that the category of science that I'm going to give y'all will appeal to the youth of tomorrow. Those who will approach the ages of 18 to 21 coming up and I'm trying to bring something back to us. The restoration of civilization relies upon the ability of us, Moors, righteous men like myself, during these next seven years of global and economic and social revolution. I'm telling y'all, and the majority of those now ranging from, I say, the ages of 20 to 60 have been too deeply instilled with emotional religious doctrine and distorted history, which has been written by prejudice, no disrespect, European, I call it Eurocentric propaganda and Afrocentric propaganda. See, I ain't just gonna blame stuff on somebody that don't look like you. I'm gonna blame on the ones that look like you too. That Eurocentric propaganda, bull crap, and that Afrocentric propaganda. I ain't with that. These groups emotionally rely upon that which they have been taught to believe and testify are not the foundations of their faith, except in a very rare case. And these people accept without question the beliefs of those among them who are born and reared and will disbelieve even the evidence when I give you evidence of their senses rather than disband the impractical emotional religious beliefs which have grown in them. Your beliefs, you, you emotionally attached. Most Negro blacks of color are emotionally attached to bullshit person who possess the applied knowledge of the science of astrology always employ the term such as science, truth, facts, rather than mystic magic terms employed in religious mystery. Like, I gotta, I gotta be truthful. When they be talking about some Allah and I say you are Allah. When they talk about God, I can get deeper with that. Jehovah, Jesus, and Christ. I can get deeper with this. These five magic religious terms bred only false fear, mental confusion, conflicting opinions, and secret hatred. Astrologers are aware of the fact that the aforementioned mystic magic phrases of emotional fear employed in religious mystery are laden with confusion, mental slavery, human hatred, jealousy, discrimination, human caste, economic and social uh, uh, degradation. Human warfare, bloodshed, destruction, and starvation. And today, religious worshipers have proven to the entire world that they had rather resort to emotional human hatred and fight and suffer and die over the name of the mystical God and religion than reasonably agree with the simplified and applied truth, the facts of science involving their economic and social stride as shown in the 12 signs of the ever-present Zodiac. Are y'all following me, Moors? When people talk about, oh, it's a God and Allah, here go God and Allah right here. The sun in the middle with all the astrological signs. When you get them, when you get them religious Muslim, ask them to show you a picture of Muhammad. They can't, because it ain't one. Ask them to show you a picture of Jesus. They can't, because it ain't one. This is, this is Muhammad, this is God right here. The sun in the middle with all the astrological signs off of it. Prove me wrong, you can't. 
in order that you might readily understand the contents of what I'm about to give y'all. You are vibe to momentarily, you got to lay aside all the stuff that you have been taught to believe except mathematics. That's why when I say more need a flush and fill and reboot their high drive, when I say that a flush and fill is you got to get all that bullshit out of you that you thought was good for you. That's a flush and feel and get the right stuff in you. When I say you got to reboot your high drive, it's just like a computer. You got a fucking virus. Excuse my candor. All that misinformation. You walking around with a virus. I mean, you walking around polluted. You need to reboot your high drive. Take that bullshit ass chip out of you and throw that crap in the trash. Are you following me? And if you ain't, I ain't for you. Only thing you got to keep is mathematics. And as a result, you will be guided by common reason rather than by traditionally emotional beliefs. And I'm aware of the fact, Moors, that both Muslim and Christ teaches, uh, uh, teachers have a monopoly on the mystic and the religious superstition, but not on mathematics. The science of geometry involving the 12 signs of the zodiac, the universal law, which is Islam. See, see, I destroy all this garbage. The astro, the astrology and astronomy. The difference between astrology and astronomy is that astrology treats of the human characteristics, the talent, the actions, the reaction, sociology, economics, and global geography, or space and time, mores. But astronomy is the priest, the pope, the bishop, the rabbi, the preacher, the duke, the duchess, the queen, the king, Anglo-Saxon, the lower code of the Christian world, of whom propagates the myth, the culture of heaven in the sky, some sky god, and hell below, after death. That's what organized religion does. That's, that's what European Christianity, that's what Al Islam is all about. The Christian astronomers are the stargazers. Stargazers who go to heaven by the way of what? Expensive telescopes, all that dumb stuff, imaginary planets, Mars, Saturn, Pluto, all that stuff. Such philosophy, such philosophy mores definitely cannot help or solve our economic and social problem. That's why the real moon and the sun are under our feet, namely the earth. The powers of the moon and sun dwell in our women. Y'all ain't even following me now. Now they're getting upset. Because y'all playing, because y'all been disrespecting your empresses. That's why you ain't got nothing. Now you can draw your own conclusion as to why astrology and astronomy conflicts. Astrology erases all beliefs and opinions of superstition, confusion, religious mystery, false fear, and idol or image worship. Astrology has always involved this universal simple fact, Moors, and namely the woman and grown sons in the course of one second. And you can observe the moon, the sun, and the stars, the earth, and themselves without employing a telescope. Therefore, Moors, women, and grown sons compromise the supreme manifestation of the whole of creation, space and time, which need no doctrine of religion, mystery, fear, superstition to influence them, to employ that which is right, Moors. Because the science of astrology the woman, the sun, the earth, the water, the air, the heat, the fear, fire, earth, air, river, and the food constitutes the great force of creation, often referred to in science as what? Electromagnet, the current and the voltage of what? Atomic energy. In one aspect, when I say 666, when I say 666 have all meanings in the Bible, you must understand the context. It could be talking about the Roman government, but in the context of what I'm talking about, 666 is the chemical makeup of man. Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. It's just what it is. You got to understand that the human body and mind on earth contain all elements of nature. We are what we eat, what we drink, inhale and exhale. Therefore, all energies generate from the stomach. That's why when I look at Moors, they talk about they some sheets and you fat as hell. No disrespect to a person bigger. But they talk about that like you. This energy come from here, your diaphragm. That's why when I tell people that I'm like, I walk erect. I walk with all my stomach. I, I work out. My body is my temple. I ain't following it. Just like Pot said, looking like Larry Holmes, flabby and sick. And you talk about you finna teach somebody something and lead somebody something. You ain't ready for war. You ready for a damn uh, uh, chicken sandwich. That's what you're ready for. Stop lying to me. Hell. We, the human family, are the only supreme uh, moving planets or heavenly bodies. 
Objects do not come to us. We go to all objects by the way of what? Walking, riding, flying, sailing, observation, mathematics, vibration, sound, or signal. Don't know come to you. We go to everything, man. Y'all tripping. Because it ain't no science. Y'all just listen to a whole bunch of fools. You might as well go to the club with your wife and have a good time. Y'all following all this Morris goofball TV shit. All this goofy stuff. I yet to see a more that talk about they part of the temple, teach some science. I still haven't seen it. Our code or facts perfection and the guidance of practical wisdom compromise of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, three, six, nine, twelve, the universal standard rule of measurement and the letters of the alphabet. Astrology is the code of Moore's nation. Our forefathers of this hemisphere who founded the universal order of Islam 1,367 years ago and re-educated the confused human family, thereby establishing the great civilization that the world has ever known, the civilization in which we know live. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, zero, three, six, nine, and twelve. The sixty seconds of the minute, sixty minutes of the hour, and also the letters of the Arabic alphabet of which compromised the culture of the Moors. Our forefathers of the Muslim world, who are often referred to in the Christian literature as Mohammedans or heathens. I hope y'all following this, but y'all following these goofballs. That's why our school getting ready to pop off. Everybody will be deleted. The code of the Roman cross. Y'all know the numer uh, numeric numbers. One numerical, two, three, three, blah, blah, blah. And a Latin or the Spanish language compromised of the Christian code of which was born out of what? Moorish. Our father's code, our forefather's code in South Africa, Patagonia, known today as what? Argentina, the original region of the new masses of humanity who possesses ruddy or red pale skin with greenish blue eyes and long blonde hair. What I showed y'all how the Smithsonian cover stuff up. This is scholarship, ain't nothing new. Argentina, Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, all which compromise the springboard of the Roman nation Moors of many different races, caste and color, guided by domains or, 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 or dogmas is a Latin phrase which defines as what? False doctrine. This is, man, this is, this elementary. The term Rome implies the people who conquer by intrigue, force and violence and enslave the human mind, the mind through false doctrine of religion, mystery and image or idol worship of various mystical God phrases, most common of which are Jehovah, God, Christ, Buddha. So you got to remember that these United States of North America compromise every so-called race, no disrespect, of the lily, the term Khan, K-H-A-N, implies the people who control the board of real estate, commerce, production, and, di and distribution of the order of the Roman colonization. I mean, I can get way deeper with the science, but this is for my students. I'm giving you a crash course. You got to understand when having been defeated by the Roman tribes of South America, they were they were uh, submitted themselves to the Roman slavery under the name such as what? Negro, Indian, which resulted in the loss of their birthrights in 1774 and the Christian calendar year, which is equivalent to what? 1,194 Moorish calendar years. You see when I be telling Moors they all off because you're going by somebody else's calendar? 1453 equals 1492. The Christian calendar year is equivalent to 873 or 912 Moorish calendar years. Are y'all following me? The Roman conqueror added 580 years to the Moorish calendar. 1795 Christian calendar year is equivalent to 12 to uh, 1215 Moorish calendar year. 1865 Christian calendar year is equivalent to 1285 Moorish calendar year. 1946. CCY is equivalent to 1366, May 1946 and 1366 have cleared up the mystery of the 666. I'm telling you, New York is the empire state of the order of Rome and Can, the lily people of the world. Have you ever stopped to think that among the Asiatics of the United States of America, referred to as Negroes, there can, uh, there can be had a, a similarity of every so-called race of the entire world, the land of the Moors, the crest of Asia, Peru, Mecca, Isabella, Cuba, USA, Canada, Alaska, all of which uh, uh, compromise the land of the culture Moors, the descendants of the ancient Moabite nation, 
the fathers of civilization who inhabited the hemisphere and the USA, Alaska, Canada, lie in the geographical re uh, region of the crest of Asia, often referred to as the temple of the moon and the sun, of which uh, scientifically implied the greatest inclination of the earth axis to the sun during the months of June, July, and August in the northern hemisphere, and what our forefathers were before this land of our, namely, a Mexima, was named North, Central, and South America, where are that today without a doubt or contradiction, namely what Moors, and the name Moor is derived from the name Mobite. I'm telling you. So I'm gonna be done, man, because I, I can go on deeper, but I'm done. I'd have been for two hours. That's, a, that's enough. I might come back tonight, man, for our, the rest of our Sunday school. Cash up dollar sign KG Bay, man, if y'all want the lecture tonight, inbox me, and I'll finish the clock of destiny. Let me know, Islam.